S Senator Roberts. Okay, thank you. So you have the uh, affidavit from uh, Dr. Corey, Pierre Corey. The current high evidence base for ivermectin as a treatment consists of 96 controlled trials, 45 of them randomised, 78 of them published and peer reviewed, with summary meta analyses of these trials finding statistically significant reductions in death, hospitalisation, time to clinical recovery, and time to viral clearance. Does it concern you that of of all the studies on ivermectin, the only ones cited by the media and major health agencies to demonise ivermectin were all large, heavily funded trials conducted by researchers with severe financial conflicts of interest, in effect mouthpieces for pharmaceutical companies who made the injections, COVID injections. Does it concern you? Uh, Senator Roberts, I think what I said earlier was that the TGA is not able to make a determination on the efficacy of an agent one way or the other until that dossier is presented to us by a sponsor, and that's not happened. And if uh, the sponsor of Ivermectin would like to bring the depth of evidence to us, then we'd be only too happy to assess it for its value as a treatment of COVID-19. The TGA removed Ivermectin from the marketplace. The TGA, removed it, and, the and it's the, saving lives around the world. Let me finish, please. The TGA did not remove ivermectin from the marketplace. The TGA restricted off-label prescribing of ivermectin to ensure that there was drug available for those with relevant diseases that needed it, and that is, the, as I mentioned before, the, the parasitic diseases of intestinal and, and skin, and these are often remote communities in Australia where these diseases are endemic. I was treated with ivermectin several years ago. It was removed from off-label prescribing in order to allow its use for the diseases that it was intended. It was in order, from a, from a safety perspective, and the decision was made from uh, by the scheduling committee after broad consultation and and also input from the uh, advisory committee of medicine scheduling. And then it was demonised, called horse pace. But let's continue. But, Let's continue. I'm sorry, was that a During question? During the Delta I, wave... I missed that, Senator. Was that a question? Uh, I don't believe it was a question. It Thank does you. assist No, that was, just, that was just a comment. During the Delta wave in India, the Federal Government of India included both ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine in their national guideline, which led to a rapid reduction in cases and deaths in the span of just two months. Why did Australia not do the same during their own surges? Um, Senator, again, we have no evidence to support its use in the community in Australia. It's not currently indicated for that use under the ARTG. And I can't speak to what it was uh, that encouraged the Indian government to use it. Lots of Australians were getting it in from overseas. Although Australia outlawed sorry, ivermectin sorry, in the treatment of... No, it wasn't a question. Okay, I'm sorry. Although Australia outlawed ivermectin in the treatment of COVID-19, why was no analysis done of the large evidence base in prevention which extends to 17 controlled trials during five randomised, including five randomised trials, with 16 of the 17 showing high statistical significance and a large reduction, 85 per cent reduction, in the incidence of COVID when ivermectin was taken prophylactically. Why? Again, Senator Roberts, for the TGA to uh, make a, a, a determination on the value of ivermectin in treating COVID-19, either for the acute illness or in a preventative sense, we would need to have a formal dossier presented to us by the sponsor of the drug, and that's not happened. And were that to happen, we'd be only too happy to evaluate all of the evidence. But I should point out, Senator Roberts, that there was a clinical evidence task force that was funded by uh, the Commonwealth to, to analyse the scientific evidence on all potential COVID treatments and they analysed ivermectin data at length and, and concluded it, it had no value in the treatment or prevention of COVID-19. Right. Thank you for that. It's very much appreciated. Why was ivermectin banned as a claimed horse paste and then once the vaccine rollout had reached maximum uptake, why was ivermectin reauthorised for off-label prescription with a weak non-binding recommendation against use for COVID? I, I can't answer the, your first comment. I'm not aware of that um, uh, term being used. Uh, the reason that the restriction on off-label use uh, of ivermectin was made was because of an application by uh, a doctor. I cannot remember his name. I'm sorry, I can provide it for you. Um, if you who, could, please. Absolutely, that is public knowledge on the, on the determinations of the Advisory Committee for, Medical, for Medicine Scheduling. Um, the, the determination was such that 
with most Australians now vaccinated uh, and protected from COVID, with the development of the evidence base to the point where most clinicians were well aware that, that ivermectin had little use in COVID-19, uh, uh, it was felt that the current, uh, the existing um, uh, situation where off-label prescription was restricted was uh, not proportionate to the risk to the community, and that's why off-label uh, uh, prescription of ivermectin was was uh, the, the restrictions were removed. So, are you aware of the concept of regulatory capture as it pertains to agencies such as yours being captured by the pharmaceutical industry who fund the TGA? It's a well-known co concept within within uh, pharmaceutical industry around the world. Are you aware of it? I reassure you that doesn't happen at the TGA. Right. Did it ever occur to you that recommendations emanating from agencies like the World Health Organization, European Medicines Agency, the FDA and the CDC may be compromised by their close relationship with the pharmaceutical industry? Uh, Senator, I... I I can only reassure you that the decisions of the t at the TGA and of our international collaborators are of the highest regard to scientific evidence and quality and safety. Why did you threaten me? Why did the TGA threaten me with a letter? Because I was daring to speak about ivermectin. I can't answer that question. I don't know if any of my colleagues can. I'm a duly elected senator. Whether you agree with me or not, I'm entitled to speak. I, again, and the I, government has blood on its hands. I was not involved in that process, Senator. But the TGA I tried to shut me down. I can't personally Perhaps answer that question. Perhaps you can provide question. us details with that, Senator. We certainly will. Senator Roberts. Do you, want a, do you want a table of letter? I, I haven't got it with me. I certainly haven't seen it. I dismissed it and sent a reply back and I said thank you. Sure. Sticking with ivermectin, did you see the letter? Oh. I've heard about it before, Senator. I mean, it's just outrageous. No review, no accountability. So totally so outrageous. If you're discussing a document, it would be very helpful <clears throat> for the committee for that document to be tabled and for the witnesses to be able to respond to a document I'll without it being tabled is very difficult. So perhaps we could. I'll send it to the committee next week. Uh, we won't be my estimates letter. Next the letter week, I received. Yes, you're, you're welcome to, but I, what I'm suggesting, um, Senator Roberts, if you're seeking to discuss a document with witnesses at the table who indicate they don't know which document you're referring to, I've ended to, the discussion. I just want to know why, if, why they did it. Okay. Well, they Senator they don't know anything about it. Actually, speaking to the document, that's all. So, Senator Roberts. Well, it's up to Senator Roberts. Obviously, they would like to table it. Um, hmm. Therapeutic Goods Administration, uh, uh, Administration has said in its removal of the prescription, prescribing restrictions on ivermectin, the TGA has removed the restriction through its scheduling in the poison standard because there is sufficient evidence that the safety risk to individuals and public health is low when prescribed by a general practitioner in current health department. What changed? Senator, as I said earlier, the reason that the uh, off-label prescribing of ivermectin was in place was because of shortages of supply of ivermectin to the community that were most in need. And as well, there was a concern about safety, but not from the drug, from safety from the point of view who people in the community would be not seeking vaccines or formal treatments for COVID-19 in the false belief that ivermectin was treating their condition. And it was that was the most significant concern around safety. And now, as most of the community is vaccinated, the safety level has improved. And as I said, most of the medical professions, uh, professionals in Australia are now aware of the, the paucity of data supporting ivermectin in treating COVID-19. I'd like to know if you still think it's a paucity of data when you read that affidavit from, from I've already Dr. offered Corey. to take that on notice for Thank you, you, Senator. Uh, what percentage of the Australian population has had three shots and what percentage has had four shots? Um, yes, we can That's get, get Sorry that. Sorry to steal your question, Matt. Yeah, Good question. We, we can get that data. I don't know whether Dr Pete might want to come and... OK, let's continue with this. Yep. Um, on this, on its own, remove, notice removing the prescribing restrictions on ivermectin, it says pretty much what you just said then, this, uh, Professor Langham. But it also says widespread use 
of ivermectin instead of approved vaccines and treatments was another reason. Surely we should let people and doctors in particular decide what, what, they wanted, what they wanted to prescribe for COVID. I know of really credible doctors, specialists in their field, who did their own research and they came up with the, with the conclusion that ivermectin worked. This is before the virus arrived in this country and they were getting ready to prescribe ivermectin. They organised it for themselves, but they weren't allowed to. They were ashamed by APRA. Is that any way to run a health industry? I can't speak for APRA, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. I'm not asking you to speak for it. I'm asking you to tell me what you think. Is that a valid way to run an industry? Uh, I've, already, I've already gone Senator through Robert, the reasons uh, excuse, for the decisions. Excuse me, um, I had a point of order from Senator Urquhart. Uh, you can't ask an opinion, Senator Roberts, I'm sorry. Ask a question. Senator Roberts. Thank you. The TGA did not act pro um, proactively on ivermectin. Why not? Because you need a sponsor? Is that it? I think I've already explained that, Senator Roberts, for us to be able to consider the evidence and extend an indication for a product in Australia that does require a submission by the sponsor. Wasn't it already approved for use in this country? Ivermectin, as I've mentioned, is approved for proven conditions which include certain parasitic illnesses of the gastrointestinal tract and the skin. But now it's back. It has always been used for that and is still available for that. It can be used now off-label. Uh, let's go to another issue around Pfizer. Pfizer staff imported a special dose of COVID vaccine, batch FD0927, reserved for Pfizer Australia employee vaccination program. What was wrong with the vaccine for the rest of the country was given? Uh, Senator, um, I'm aware of that batch. I just don't have any information on the detail with me um, to be able to answer that question, but happy to take that on notice. Um, I think it has been uh, the subject of a question on notice prior, so we will go through and, and be able to table something. This batch that was given restricted to Pfizer Australia employees is marked in your batch release notes as, quote, not tested. Can I confirm the TGA did not test this batch for its contents? As I said, I'll, I'm happy to take that on notice because it was the subject of quite considerable conversation at previous um, committee hearings and I'm happy to take that on notice to confirm. This batch could have been saline and you wouldn't have known it, correct? As I said, I'll take that on notice as well. So if, if, uh, last question. Take the call yep, to give your colleagues question. an opportunity. I'll finish up on this section of Pfizer. If yeah. Pfizer's staff don't trust the vaccine, why did you? It seems the health department is not looking out for our health, but are looking out for the health of the pharmaceutical companies that provide 96% of your funding. Is the TGA choosing to not bite the hand that feeds you? Um, so we, we are, the way that the TGA operates is that we're a cost, for fund, cost recovery agency. Sponsors pay uh, fees for us to, uh, to assess their products and um, upon assessment and evaluation, we either approve or not approve those products. I don't believe that I can agree with your assertion there that you've just made. It's, it's a transactional uh, Indeed it process. Is. Indeed it is. Um, 